We are live, everyone. Welcome to episode seven uh, of the Superhero Hour. And we are going, we're supposed to start off with Thor Ragnarok spoiler review, but some news broke, and we'll get to that. But I want to introduce, of course, my fellow host of the show, starting off with Charles. How's it going, man? Uh, doing pretty good. Um, I would like to apologize that I was not here last week, but I was getting caught up on Stranger Things season two. Um, I think it's I think it's pretty good so far. Uh, I like it. I'm not done with it yet, but I'm getting there. Really? Yeah, I, I, dude, it's me. You're, it's me. I'm talking about right. You know, how, <laughs> you know how long it takes me to watch shows like this. True, dude, true. it's only nine episodes. I've been. I was on Saturday. I've been playing Guild Wars two. <laughs> But uh, um, okay, all right, cool. Stranger Things caught you up. All right, Lou, how are you? How are you doing? I'm well, you know, it's the usual Monday. All right, okay, let us do this. This is a bunch of things. Uh, quick news before not all the news, but this quick news this has to do with Shazam because there's a lot of Shazam uh, casting announcements mm -hmm. that were made. Uh, starting off with uh, today's announcement, uh, is that um. What's his name? What's his name again? Billy Basson has been cast, and the actor is a Disney uh, Channel actor. Yeah, I know. I had his name for a second, and Heroic Hollywood doesn't put names. They try to hide it in the articles. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't have a problem with the casting. I think I think he might be able. Well, I don't know the kid's like like history as an actor. I haven't watched any of his Disney Channel shows because, well, I don't watch Disney Channel. But um, I don't know. I mean, if Warner Brothers thinks that he's best suited to play the character, then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep an open mind. I'll, I'll see how he fares once Shazam finally comes out. Yeah. Um, Astra Angel is his name. And uh, let me just share this for you guys so you can see who this kid is. Uh, some of the photos, he looked like a young Zachary Levi, honestly. Okay. Uh, that's one thing that I noticed as well is that he does actually look like Zach like a younger Zachary Levi. Yeah, so so I I, I I love it when when casting directors look for that when they have uh like like a like a character and then there has to be a younger version of that character. I always prefer it when they pick a younger actor who at the very least looks somewhat similar to the main actor. Yeah. I, I love it when they do that. So I am that's a plus for me. Cool. Uh, I agree, and I, I, th I believe Lou is probably like, yeah, it's cool. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, he, he doesn't care. I'll see it when I see it. Yeah. Um, and um, Annabelle creation star Grace Fulton is also being cast in the movie, most likely the kid's mother, mm -hmm. I'm presuming. doesn't say exactly what role she is. And uh, Umberto broke that Mark Strong is in the title role for the villain, um, Doctor Sivania. Ah, I've forgotten his name. I'm mean, forgotten what his his powers were, but he's a long time villain. But he also has ties to Black Adam to some degree, so that always puts Black Adam into the mix here. But yeah, the the only the only uh, Captain Marvel or Shazam villain that I'm familiar with is uh, Black Adam. As for any of his other villains, I have no idea who they are. Oh, that's fine. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, but I think this this links in quite well. And having an actor like Mark Strong, mm. great. Oh in. no, Mark Strong is a is an excellent actor. And um, e even though I have no idea who the character he's playing is, I'm excited. I yeah. mean, he, he's he's perfect for villain roles. So I'm very excited. And Lou, since you broke that news to me quickly before we started, you said Disney is in preliminary talks to buy. Fox. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, early stages from what it, the article said. But it's looking like if it does go through, they're going to get back Fantastic Four, X Men, mm -hmm. Deadpool, all moving back into their universe. Ah, oh, man, that's going to make a completely huge. And what they, the article did say is it, it's really leaning towards it because then they can also do movies that are more R-rated and leave it under that umbrella mm -hmm. and it doesn't tarnish the family brand. Yeah, which I think is a smart idea because uh, like, uh, for example, like uh, with the Disney streaming service, 
bringing uh, the possibility of bringing future streaming TV shows that are more adult oriented, like uh, Punisher, Daredevil, possibly even Blade, that could potentially be damaging to the family friendly brand that Disney has. But um, uh, if if they were to acquire 21st Century Fox, that would present present them the opportunity to do more adult oriented stories, which would be fantastic for them. It, it would be just great. Yeah, very true. Very true. And uh, yeah, everyone's buying stuff, especially with uh, if if this starts moving ahead, the Warner Brothers AT&T deal will close. There's no reason for that, which will now mean that the only studios that are that are on, a, on their own are Paramount mm -hmm. and Universal. That's it. And most likely, if the if these two deals happen, Paramount and Universal are going to merge. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's not about feel. It's just about they have to survive, right? Well, the well, thing not is, necessarily. Is Universal it, has the Fast franchise and Fantastic Beasts to keep it afloat. Plus, other it's, it's not little keeping, movies. It's not about keeping it afloat anymore. Think about how big that is. Oh no! If Disney acquires 21st Century Fox, that's going to be that's going to increase the power that Disney has. Like already, remember, already Disney is, is forcing studios to keep Star Wars for a longer run. They have more power. They try to take more money. That means that if you have any movie that's opening, even if it's even two weeks after away a Disney-owned property, you're afraid that you might not make the money because you don't have the bargaining power. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, now it's not, it's not even about the quality of the movie anymore, right? Yeah, but the <laughs> thing the thing is, is that if Universal were to merge with Paramount, what would that mean for Universal's Dark Universe movies and then Paramount's Star Trek movies? Oh, that's fine. I think the Star Trek movies would benefit um, in general. Um, I I think you at least you get a different set of eyes, maybe look at it to do something else. Maybe they will do one more in the J.J. Abrams universe, right? Oh, and they already then, have a fourth one planned. Yeah, no, it's one more to end that one, and then you move on from there, right? So, oh, they, so the, there's a couple sorry. of things. So what you're saying is, is that once they're done with Star Trek Four, they're going to start doing something like maybe rebooting the Next Generation movies? I mean, no, no it just all depends. Like, it, you don't have to reboot. They might decide to say, okay, fine. It's time for – because we have good tech in terms of technology, mm -hmm. it's time for us to tell stories in Star Trek future. So where Data is a captain in, in Star Trek. The thing is, Data's dead. Yeah but, alert. yeah, but I mean, depends on how far forward. I mean, how long Data died? It took him a while to die in the first place, right? Well, no, no. He died in Star Trek Nemesis, and he simply died by oh. blowing himself up. Oh, no, 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 no. If you read the novels, he's a captain. Remember, his other, his brother. Oh, you're whatever. talking about B4. B4 basically became Data again. They still okay. Data. Yeah, but he had obsolete components. He, he was a prototype. You go read the novels and comic books. He's a captain. There you go. Trust me. He's there. So you could, but you could do future stories. You could do future Star Trek stories moving forward, right? Okay. Instead of doing older stories where you have to retrofit tech. So it would be interesting. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk some Thor. Thor Ragnarok spoiler review. We've all seen it, right? Yes. Yeah, all right. Good. Okay. I gave my initial thoughts last week, and uh, I'll kick it off with Lou. You, Lou. Uh, what do you think? Quick. Movie was great. I gave it a. My score was a nine. Oh wow. Okay. I really enjoyed it. The humor was, it hit what it needed to hit. The action was great. Kate Blanchett as the villain was awesome. I'm glad they didn't use her in Dark World. Okay. Uh, how about you, Charles? I gave it a 7.1 out of 10. Okay. Um, it, it, the thing is, is that I was really hoping Thor Ragnarok would be amazing, but Kate Blanchett was Blanchett was extremely underused. I mean, she she was she was only she was only there like briefly talking to uh, Carl Urban's character, while the real villain of the movie was the Grandmaster. Uh, uh, he because he had more screen time than Hela did which I thought was a little disappointing, even though I love uh, Jeff Goldblum. I think he's great, and I thought he was great as the Grand Master, but they were marketing Kate Blanchett as the villain, and that clearly was not the case when we watched it. And then another... Yeah, it was. She thought, killed people. No. The Grand Master didn't. 
but it's not i'm not talking about body count i'm talking about screen time screen you time wanted, don't always pose as a villain dude you want to not every villain is on screen long well i mean I, i'll put it this way i i do agree with charles to certain degree i mean well, I, we I know you're biased towards marvel e no 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 i wanted to see more of hella look yeah i watched i watched the movie i told you guys i enjoyed it there's some things that i didn't like um you know, everybody said it was a fun movie. The the you know the general reviews I said it was fun is very true, mm -hmm. but to me it does not relate to a like you give it a number nine, right? I'll give the movie a an eight, um, and that's just being because the the fun aspect covered a lot of stuff that I didn't like, and some of that is my personal preference. A lot of the a lot of the Planet Hulk characters were sidelined completely. Yeah, that, so that was a little disappointing. I wanted to see just a little bit more of that, but I mean, I get it. it's a Thor movie, so I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of like, ah, I mean, like it was wasted. Kinda. Well, no, I mean, in, another issue I had is that some of the jokes that they did just kind of felt out of place. Like, I, I, I can't pick, I can't pick and choose like any jo specific jokes, but some of the jokes just didn't really feel right for the situation. Uh, and it, it it just it kind of threw me out of the movie. Uh, and then of course Korg, which was played by the director, um, he was funny at times, but most of the time I just thought he was annoying. I mean, I I'm not the biggest fan of that director because I did watch one of his other movies. I watched the movie What We Do in the Shadows, that uh, sort of like uh, uh, that uh, vampire documentary slash comedy movie they did. Uh, that movie, in my opinion, was horrible. I uh, I hated the comedy in that movie, and it just didn't work for me. And I was able to see some similarities in style of comedy in Thor Ragnarok, and it just didn't work for me. I mean, that's probably why that that right there is probably the main reason why I gave it as low as a seven point one out of ten. I mean, because, you know, it's funny though. Schnapp did say that. He said, "If you don't like his humor," and I can see that. It, for some people, it won't be much, but his yeah. humor, his humor is one thing where um, I mean I got it. It's just that since I knew the characters, I didn't like the fact that he chose to do that with those characters. But mm. you know, for me, I'm like, oh, well, I mean, the movie's still good. It's it's all right. Like I, I won't complain about it. The one thing I'm glad they got right, um, and I I wish that fight. I, I think it was a great fight. The fight between Hulk and Thor. Um, I just wished it was a little bit longer. Out. Yes, exactly. I felt like there was, it needed to be more. You know, that fight literally was the fight of Hulk versus um, uh, Beta Ray Bill in Planet yeah. Hulk or Hulk versus Silver Surfer in the comic book. And, you know, I felt like, yeah, you're right. Lou said it right. I was like, because uh, that was the best fight in the whole movie. Mm hmm. And the person who cheated us was the Grandmaster. Yeah. I mean, it was planned that way so that, you know, they, they stopped it because I wanted that to be more. Um, what I didn't like, the one thing I didn't like is... Well, he woke I, up in Hulk's room. That was funny. Yeah. Uh, one thing Hulk I... I out in my hot tub all naked and shit. He's like, that's in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I, di I didn't like the fact that they didn't show... Um, uh, they didn't explain... Uh, the Odin Force, aka where Hela gets, even though I mean where Hela gets her powers, and where Thor gets his powers, you know, it's just out of the blue. He's just, you know, like I the explanation they gave was very just, it was just bad. To me, I was like, this is a great way for you to explain it to show exactly why Hela really hates her father and she wants the throne, because mm -hmm. like one of my friends said, it's like, yeah, I get it. She's trying to destroy everything. She's the goddess of death, but. I mean, really? Are you just going to kill everybody and not have anybody rule with? Come on. Like. Yeah, uh, but uh, one thing I will say, uh, the thing I loved most about this movie, and the, those sections were few, but the one thing I loved the most was the Stan Lee cameo, where Stan Lee just came in with that whole device to cut his hair, and he <laughs> just, I, I loved how Thor just said, like, no, please, sir, don't cut my hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I thought that was really funny, just how so, he said it. So, Lou, what scenes do you like? I liked all of it. No, I mean, come on, you gotta pick one. Dave, you Dave, gotta Dave, be uh, more specific, dude. Don't give me that all of that crap. I That's enjoyed like, the movie from beginning to end. I thought the final end credit scene was pointless. Yeah. 
Well, um, I, I didn't stay for the one at the end of the crawl, but I did watch the one where Loki and Thor were having a talk, and then that ship came out of nowhere and all that. Oh, that's Thanos. Yeah, I figured that was Thanos. I figured it was. But I didn't watch the other post credit scene, so I have no idea what happened. Yeah, uh, I'm, honestly, I don't remember it. That's how pointless it was. The second one was basically uh, uh, like a spaceship landed, and Grandmaster comes out, people pointing guns, and he's like, Yay, for revolution! Awesome! Thank you. I'm glad I participated in this, and we are, we did this together because you know you need a dictator to overthrow. So I call it a tie. Okay. That was it. But uh, no, uh, one th one thing that I know that I remember that I did not like is that they killed off the Warriors three. Oh yeah, that's why that's why Shazam. As soon as they stabbed me, I was like Shazam. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I knew I knew I knew Zachary Levi was leaving because he was he was cast as Shazam. That was the first thing that popped up in my head. But Ray Stevenson's character was killed, and then also the Asian guy, he was killed too. See, to me, I would have. Um... And and Disney would not do this. This is why this is why I I'm a little different here. The Ragnarok storyline, everybody dies, mm -hmm. and he comes back to Earth, and he he basically brings back Asgard on Earth. He creates Asgard on Earth, and he brings back everyone. That's the storyline after um, Civil War, where Captain America is dead. He comes back. He creates Asgard. Iron Man comes to fight him with his like Asgardian armor, and Thor beats the crap out of him because Thor now has the full Odin force with him. Um, but I, I just wanted to see something like that. I get it. Like Disney just won't won't go that route. So well, you did. Asgard is gone now. Asgard will be mm. on Earth. No, but no, no, no. Did you I, see I, I, no, the no, first no, credit no. scene? I, I want, I wanted, they got interrupted by Thanos. And I wanted them to wipe out everyone on Asgard and just leave him, Loki, and like just the crew. That's it. That he's oh, wanted, for. Yeah, hey, I, wanted I, him. I actually did enjoy him, um, Heimdall. He got a lot more action this time around. Yeah. He didn't feel like a useless character that just spins a sword. So Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, like I said, I, I, I agree with you guys. I think we all enjoyed the movie. Uh, I think, um, you know, Lou's the one who enjoyed the most at nine. Um, uh, Charles at least a 7.1. I'm a little bit in the middle. Um, uh, but I've I've come to just going that it's a Marvel movie. I expect to see certain things, and I do not expect to see other things in there. So that's that. Um, all right, cool. Let's move on to some more movie storylines. So we covered the Shazam stuff. Um, uh, Black Adam uh, gets a writer for his movie, uh, The Rock, which is cool. So we'll see how that finally goes. moving forward. Yeah, maybe, because uh, a lot of things are moving forward, and with all the rumblings and what Justice League is is all the going doing, it looks like the embargo is going to drop pretty soon. So, which means that movie is good, and um, we're going to get other. Um, movies. I've been checking my little thing to try to get passes. I got passes to go see Daddy's Home tomorrow. Okay. You mean Daddy's Home too? Yeah. No, yeah, Daddy's, Daddy's Home. Yeah. It's not the first one, dude. So what? It's in that universe now. <laughs> He's calling it a universe. I love it. He's like, well, no, no. The <laughs> thing is, the thing is, I can't stand comedies like that because I don't like Will Ferrell. I think he is an unfunny, talentless bastard. You know oh, what? I agree no. with you. Oh, no. I agree with you to a point. I enjoyed him in Step Brothers and Talladega Nights. Everything else, I think he sucks donkeys. No, no. no the thing is, Talladega Nights. Tal Elf. Tal Elf made me mad. I did not like that movie at all. And then Talladega that's, Nights. That was I'm a sorry. big giant baby running around <laughs> everywhere. Ta Talladega Nights, I wanted to like shove my face in like ice cold water and just start screaming. And I just Shake like, and bake. Woo! <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't like Will Ferrell. I don't think he's funny. I don't. I, I don't either. But I'm not going to watch it for him. I'm going to go see. The, I enjoyed the first one. It was one that, you know, I saw digitally when it came out that way i refused to go to the theater to watch it and then since i got a free pass to go see this in the theater is the only way i'm going granted i would have went with my movie pass because i didn't have to pay for it mm. if i have to come out of my pocket i'm not going yeah it doesn't deserve it but the fact that it's free i'll go check it out no the last will ferrell movie i watched was old school with luke wilson that's the last movie of his that i saw Okay. 
Oh. Um, let's let's check in some more news, guys. But I like I like um, Holiday Evolution. Tyrese could play Black Adam's servant. He needs a job. Let's let we'll go there, please. This is stop. Uh, some TV notes. Some interesting TV news. Uh, Lord of the Rings adaptation might is might be moving along into Amazon. They are looking at a hundred and fifty million dollar yearly budget on that. No, no, no. Okay, see, here's what I want. Give me the sixty years in between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Tell a story there. Don't touch the movie universe. The movies are priceless. They're golden. They don't need to be remade. Nothing. Have well, you read the books? I, have, well, have you actually read the Lord of the Rings books? No, I don't read books. No, look, exactly. Look, I'll put it this way, right? I haven't read the books. For everyone who's read the books, I said the movie was nice. It did a good job. It still does not even smell. Smell anything close. Dude, not so, even the extended versions? No. <laughs> I'm just well, I mean the, the, okay. the battle the battle scenes like like yeah, there and all that, and maybe they cherry picked and changed or whatever. It looked good. What they said is like they did a good job. It's almost like Game of Thrones fans will say, ask anyone who's read Game of Thrones will do like, oh, we love the TV show, it's great. But not even close to the book. Now, okay. There's, there's a reason why we have so many spin-offs, right? Think about it. So I'm just saying that it's possible. I mean, they could craft it a little different where you start seeing other sides of the story that would still build up to certain parts of the story and you're like, oh, so this is really how everything is or whatever the case may be. They maybe this just get Peter Jackson and his studio involved. Maybe they, maybe they spend time in uh, with the elves more, right? Or tell a story from that side of things first. You, you never know how they will play it out. But if you're looking at $150 million budget, they're not going to mess around. This is called what it is. I mean, dude, that's more than Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is, is um, 100 and something, so it's close. <laughs> it's, you know, but it'll be interesting, interesting to see. Um, in uh, other news, sci-fi cast Brainiac and Superman's great-grandmother. And I found out the storyline for, and they actually they announced this in Comic-Con, and I just didn't pay attention, for Krypton. Krypton starts in 2017. The storyline starts in present day, and um, basically there's a plot to kill Superman before he's born. And that's where we now move into 200 years in the past. And but who's gonna tell it from present day form? Adam Strange. Adam Strange is a character in the comic books that is connected to uh, a foreign world. Is it Zan? No, Zandar. Ah, that's another. Candor. Candor. No, no, not Candor. No, Candor is a Kryptonian tiny city. Uh, Rana, Rana, sorry. Um, where they have like uh, almost the same technology like boom tubes, right? They call it Zeta beams. It's, Pretty much almost the same thing um and i guess his character is probably the one that goes back in time and interacts with um Jorel's father pretty much and with brainiac there there was also loose talk that we might see green lanterns at some point because they can throw it in that they can pick and they can create a green lantern they want and throw it in there um and we might we might get a hint of apocalypse as well into it so so with that i i kind of like the premise of the show is that they can deal with all the dc universe space stuff and it will just <laughs> whatever they do will still not mess with any timeline whatsoever <laughs> i mean they can see like now if you want to do a show where you don't have superman just like you're sure you don't have batman and you want to fuck things up this is how you do it you create time in the past. You put it in the Well, you can't do that in Batman. I'm just saying. Just, you know, for all those people who like Gotham, Charles. <laughs> Charles is like, I don't care. Well, he's probably pissed if they got a new Poison Ivy. Uh, has, she come, has she come back yet? Oh, it's a new one. They recasted that person. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pardon my friends, but God fucking damn it. I'm stuck. Oh, damn it. They look, I mean, look, say what you will about Gotham. Say what you will with all the problems. I still enjoy it, but I will say one thing. The one thing I have a problem with that show is how they've been treating Poison Ivy. They have been drugging that character through the mud ever since season one. 
And and I just I mean and Poison Ivy is one of my favorite of the Batman Rogues gallery, and they're just doing this. And now that there was a fourteen year old oh. girl, then it was a twenty eight year old girl. Now who is it? I don't know. But uh, speaking of Leonard Snark, will no longer be in the the DC Arrowverse. Oh really? Why? Wentworth. He announced today via his Instagram, he's done. Okay. And the Arrowverse. He has a few episodes coming out. Sometime soon with the crew, but he's no longer filming. He will no longer be a part of it, just like uh, Stein. I mean, understand why Stein is. Um, okay. Broadway. Yeah, interesting. Um, other news. Um, wait, wait, wait. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you, e, but Stein is leaving the show? Yeah. Oh, you went around. In that Dude, episode, I, yeah. uh, that was in the notes two weeks ago. You didn't read them? I don't remember getting them, but uh, no. Uh, I know. Him. I know. In the most recent episode of Legends of Tomorrow, that um, J Jackson walked up to uh, somebody I don't remember who and said, "Look, I want to be able to separate Firestorm." But does that mean that Jax is going to bind with somebody else? That's a cool, something we'll have to wait and see. I think he was up to Ray. I think he was talking to Ray about it. Yeah, I think it was Ray too. All right, what's that beeping? I have no smoke idea. alarm. Oh. Um, just some other news tidbits. Um, Barry Allen will be called the Flash yet in the Justice League movie, most likely in his movie. Whoop de do. Uh, yeah. um, They'll name him at the end of the movie. Oh, you're the Flash because you run so fast. No, he's going to be named in his movie. Not probably not this one. Um, uh, Aquaman revealed that his uh, trident is not the official trident for the king. In uh, in an interview, uh, one of the interviewers basically asked him, said, so, like, why would you call it a trident? Because he has five points. He's like, I call it a uh, queen dent. Um, because I, and he basically, spoiler, if you don't want to hear this, because it's part of Justice League, so I'm just telling you now. He says he goes to Mara and he says, I need a weapon. And she hands him that. And he's like, yeah, when you watch uh, Aquaman, you see me get my real weapon. But for now, I'm using this one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Charles, you got a bomb under your chair. What? There's a bomb under your chair, Charles. Um. I, I, is somebody saying that in the chat or something? Yes. You don't have chat open? No, I don't. Oh. But no, my chair is falling apart, if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. I desperately need a new chair. The beeping. It's not my be It's not the beeping. It's not on my end. It's your end. Wall Street Journal says that Justice League is at around $300, fully, $300 million fully in reshoots. Which is uh, roughly fifty million dollars more than BVS, and Damn. sixteen. Your um, thing is beeping out, and sixteen million dollars less than Age of Ultron was three hundred sixty million dollars in terms of the budget. Um, but uh, that most of, a lot of that budget will probably be uh, be offset by the merchandising they've done so far, and they've been doing quite a bit. Mercedes Benz. I might have to meet you, Lou, because I can hear it. Oh, uh, he muted himself. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be very very uh, interesting to see how this actually pans out, um, or maybe that's not the case. But so far, we just have to wait and see. We've got how many days till Justice League? Uh, eleven Ten. days. Ten days. I thought it was going to be eleven. Oh, everybody watches the movie on Thursday. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't. I watch it on Friday. I'm trying to watch it on Monday. Oh, okay. I'm gonna spoil it on your feed. You didn't care about spoilers anyway, so that's all good. I'll be like, "Yo, man!" And Flash did this, and then this, this, that, and then Look, like I can't have you go to an early screening and me not try to get to one my damn self. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the news today, guys. Um, and everything. It's really not that much, unless you guys have more questions. You know, is Donna Goma and Charles? Huh? Huh? What? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I said Sparrow. He's basically casting our characters here in 
whatever I you know, Donald Glover and Charles is racist, Mel Gibson, who is Lou. Joe I'm Pesci. Joe Pesci. <laughs> okay. Not that anybody here cares about any new movies about effing what's that stupid franchise? Lethal Weapon. Yeah, we no, don't need the, the TV show is actually pretty good. It's fun. I'll say I'll say if you want to watch Lethal Weapon, watch the TV show. If you want to watch something new. The bomb is on well, the bomb is actually in Lou's house. It's beeping away. Countdown. <laughs> um, any other questions, guys? Anything else? We, uh, Dude, we have TV you? shows. Oh, yeah, we do. Sorry. Sorry. I almost forgot. Like, I was just like, ah, uh, there's no Don't show. Don't we start the week with Star Trek? Uh, so, Star Trek Discovery. I like the episode. A little bit more Star Trek for all those people who keep saying that Orville is better. Uh, Charles, what do you think while I muse Lou? Um, I actually liked the most. I, I've been watching Star Trek Discovery every night that it's been coming on. And even though I did enjoy. Uh, I did enjoy last night's episode quite a bit. I still say the best episode of the season is the time loop episode. I thought that was a great episode. Mm -hmm. Loved it. But um, I do agree the most recent episode was more uh, more towards traditional Star Trek than the show has been for a while. Because I've been saying it from the start. Star Trek Discovery is not a show about exploration. It's a show about war. Yeah, and, I mean, that happens in the Star Trek universe. It's just that yeah. we never explored it. Yeah, but uh, no, just uh, the last night's episode was great. I like how they introduced a uh, energy-based life form, uh, and that uh, the energy-based life form was incredibly naive because they sent out a signal to sort of p create peace talks between the Federation and the Klingons, which I think was incredibly stupid on their part. Uh, but no, I thought I thought it was great, um, and I and I don't know who said it to me. It might have been one of you two, but uh, the the new guy, the, the new guy on the team. Somebody told me that he might be controlled psychically by a clean on, and he could be like a sleeper agent. Well, I mean, we all believe that he's a sleeper agent of some sort, whether it's psychic, whether it's a brain replacement. Oh, who knows? But the fact that. Number one, he's on. He's he's in, been in every episode, even though he's only sh actually physically the guy himself is physically shown up in in uh, the f the the last uh, third, the last the third, third. Yeah, he missed the first two episodes. He wasn't in the first two, so you know we'll just have to wait and see. What yeah, but I, I originally shot that theory down, thinking that it wasn't true. But after last night's episode, I was like, you know what? It could actually be true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, something about last night's episode also it. gave us that his little uh, girlfriend, Volk's girlfriend, yeah. she might try to do that brain thing with the Admiral. Oh, snap. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. You know, when they said the Admiral escaped, I was like, I didn't know she just left the body there and then. No, no. The, the, I don't think the Admiral is dead. I think she's just unconscious. I know. I think she is. So, wow. That's, okay. That's going to be interesting. We'll see what happens. And the show, mid-season mid finale is next week, and it takes hiatus till when again, Lou? Two months. We got to be thankful because if this episode would have been the mid-season finale, this would have been a horrible mid-season finale. Yeah, I mean, the uh, it's a setup. At least it was a setup for the mid-season finale, you know, at least the battle with the, the big... The big ship, and then we go into two month break and comes back in January. Yeah, know? yeah, January. Okay, cool. The first week of January, from what I heard. Oh, that's great. Or what I read. If it's first week, that's that's perfect timing. There's nothing New Year. You don't want to go to work. You're just feeling slow. <laughs> you just run and watch Star Trek. And then, and then yeah. we've got. Let me see. Supergirl. You guys can talk about it because I haven't watched the last two two weeks. So. This week wasn't as bad, but it's it, it just needs to get better. She the needs to get over herself. The last episode I remember is when um, it's at the end of the episode where uh, Ruby's mom starts like having hallucinations with those tattoos over her body. And there was like that spirit like creature that talked to her and all that. Um, uh, and that's the last episode I remember. I, I don't know. Just that was last week. That was last week? Okay. 
Yeah, it, like I said, it's been mediocre at best so far this season. Um, Flash, Flash was Flash and Legends have been the best ones so far. Yeah, out, so, of, out of the four. La- last week's episode of Flash has been was fantastic. I thought it was hilarious. Which was last week? Uh, it elongated was the elongated man. Elongated oh, yeah, man. Okay, yeah. Last week yeah. was cool. I enjoyed yeah. it too. I, I really liked it. I thought the CG effects were great. Well, great for a TV show. I mean, it was. Uh, I get it. And again, you know me. I like to get peeved sometimes. I was just kind of watching it. I was like, and Barry's like, I could teach you. I was like, you do. Know, I was like, in the comic book, Alligator Man is the second best detective in the DC universe, and he's been doing this before Barry Allen even came to the scene. So I was like, I but mean, I like. I also we didn't talk about it, E, but the episode with Breacher. Oh, uh, the dad. The dad. That the, that beginning scene was priceless. Him and, him and Gypsy are about to get it on. Oh, and yeah, the yeah, father yeah. reaches into the room and starts shooting at him. It's like, I'm going to kill you. It's like, oh, God. Ah, ah. And he's like ducking and covering. Yeah, because yeah. for some reason, Cisco does not know how to use his powers without gearing up. He, he just can't. But see, the episode was great, but Danny Trejo's use of his hands like this was just horrible. Yeah, I think uh, Danny Trejo probably did that on purpose. Yeah, I mean, he was, Danny, you could tell he was just like, I'm just going to have fun with this thing. And, and you know. Whatever. Oh, but they did. They, they, there was an Easter egg in it. Cisco pulls up a machete. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, it was cool. It was a good episode. Um, with Arrow, the- I'm sorry, Diggle Wiggle and his cronies. It's just, I don't give a crap. Yeah, so I'm not the liking fact this season. He's back with Felicity. What, what is annoying me with Arrow is that for they actually are getting Black Canary right. And they're just not doing anything with it other than the whole, you know, other than she's just getting on Diggle Wiggle's case, right? And saying, like, yo. Not even this. that. She's getting a Diggle Wiggle's face. She's getting manhandled a little bit. Oh, God. And then this past episode. Like, so- better, though. <laughs> this whole they don't have a solid villain for the over for the whole season is getting annoying. One minute you think it's the FBI, now it's the guy back from last season that they broke out, or Felicity broke out. The guy from Lost. See, I, at least I like I like in Flash that the main villain was hinted from last year. They, they hinted the tink, tinkerer from last year, where he mentioned oh. Devoe and. Yeah. Every, you know, and then he's like, "Oh snap!" You know, like I like that connective tissue, even if you may not have planned it or whatever, right? But I like the fact that you found a way to make it connective and to be like, "Oh shit, maybe I should." Like you know, it's the kind of thing like if you started watching Flash now, that would tell you, "Oh, maybe I should go back and watch last season, right?" Let me let me check it out. That's the kind of stuff that I would like to see, but you know, it's just not here. Yeah, um, uh, Legends of Tomorrow is cool. Fun still. Um, the time viewers, I think they did a bunch of foolish people. <laughs> like I said, Legends has been great. I've been enjoying Legends. Out of Legends and Flash, they've been one and two. Arrow, obviously three, because Supergirl's just been horrendous. <laughs> uh, and then, honestly, the best show on Monday nights is The Gifted. I haven't been watching The Gifted. I'm, I'm like, I, I, I haven't even watched the first episode yet. Yeah, but see, when you do watch it, you're gonna enjoy it because I mean, everybody saying The Gifted too. is great. Is Gifted is gonna go to Disney Network's channel? Well, wherever it goes, however it becomes, it's going to be awesome. It plays well as a binge, and it also plays well as a week to week. And in your case, since you haven't watched them all. When you finally start to binge them, you'll be like, wow, this plays like a really long movie. Well, I saw a clip where Thunder, Thunder, Thunderbird, uh, not Thunderbird, um, whatever his name is, he, you know, stopped an explosion. It's from, girl? it's from yes, yesterday's episode, I think, or maybe next week. The guy, the Native American dude. Thunderbird. Thunderbird, yeah, sounds right. Um, I forgot. One of the original X-Men, actually. Like I said, it plays well. It's one of the best shows. It's, it's the best show on Monday because Supergirl's been horrible. And then, like I said, I've enjoyed Inhumans. Next week is the season finale. Let's see what happens with that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you know, he was supposed to keep up. It was either that or watch Gifted, and he's done neither. So will, he's going to have to go I and do 100 burp-ups. No, I'm going to do 50 burpees after this, so stay tuned, peeps. Because I need to go to the gym today, and I need to do burpees. <sighs> Other than that, that I didn't watch this week's episode of Walking Dead. Last week's episode was a little bit better, so I haven't watched one. Let's see. I know you haven't. You gave up on it. I said I would watch the first half of the season to see if it would draw me back in. Little by little, it's been okay. Okay. The first, the premiere was horrible. The second episode was I. Now I'll watch the other one sometime this week. Okay. All right. And oh, then. Cool. I will give my thoughts on Daddy's Home next week. If it's worth your time going to watch at the theater. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have time to go see it. I'm so. not talking about you. I'm talking about our, our lovely studio audience. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, we know We know you're saving. Your, you're busy. You've got a lot of unibrow coverage to put out there. <laughs> <laughs> you still got to do versus the Note 8 and the Pixel 2. And there's really no comparison to the V30 because we all know the camera on the V30 is the best out of all of them. No, no. Um, I, if I were to give the best camera, it would be the Pixel. Really? The yeah. Pixel 2 has got the better camera? The AI learning. I mean, they basically just use computer code to cheat, <laughs> but it works, man. <laughs> Let's go what it is. It, it, it works very, very well. Um, the V30 camera and the Note, you go to manual mode, you will do... You you should beat it. I mean, you can play around and beat it, but but honestly, like you know, I've I've always said that um, a camera should always be both. But the auto on the pixel, especially with the portrait, when you do this portrait shots, you just take a photo and it just. Yes, we've been seeing your selfies on your board at work Instagram page. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just all for work. I swear, I don't I don't take selfies. Mm-hmm. Semi duck face and shit. Semi, you can't do, you can't go all full duck face, man. Come on, don't men don't do duck faces. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it, guys. Anything else? Or oh, we are done for this week. Um, and you catch us again next Monday. It's a short show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, 6 p.m. It will return back to the usual time at nine unless something else happens <laughs> which has been the case lately uh but thanks for chiming in uh thank you charles thank you lou um at least our next big review would be of course justice league and justice league is gonna get a what a friday review and probably a monday review oh if i get to see it earlier uh i'll drop it whenever i see it but you said that for thor and you didn't even drop the thor review yeah, I didn't. I was tired. I came back and like I started thinking about Thor. Like I didn't want to do the review because I felt like I might have I might bash it a little bit. And I was like, I'm bashing it because of the comic book thing. So there's no need for me to, to do that. I might as well do, to do the spoiler talk itself, and not and not you know mm. do all that. So I was trying to be no. fair and balance. Okay, fair and balance. Yes, yes, fair balance. Fair yeah. balance. Fair balance will be next week when we just either we love it or hate it with Justice League. I'm sure we will love it. I can feel it. I've been I've been on the message boards way too much. <laughs> you stay on the damn message boards. You and your damn animated theme song. I'm like, what is this garbage? You know what? I didn't watch the anime, so I can't see. You should have handed that off to Charles, because Charles is like soundtracks, and he probably would have enjoyed that three-minute musical spectacle. Uh, I'll put that in, uh, link in the description. Somebody uh, took the Justly animated uh, theme, and then he remade it, So and then cued it with a, his own custom Justice League trailer, and it was awesome. Absolutely. What awesome. that cut up? It felt like the first trailer that they did for Justice League. No, it was not. It wasn't. It just took pieces. It like you took one trailer and they added pieces to it. Mm. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, peace. Bye. -bye.